Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of HP Unplugged. We are here at HPCL Rajasthan Refinery Limited, HRRL, a 9 million metric ton per annum refinery come petrochemical complex at Pachpadra Badmer. This refinery is famously known as the jewel of the desert. And today we have with us CEO of HRRL, Sri Vikhar Kamlakar. He has a massive experience of working in projects as well as in the maintenance department of refineries and he is here as the CEO of this mega project. In this interview, we will delve into his career and also how HRRL is transforming this landscape and making it India's pride and giving solution for India's energy security. So stay tuned as we delve into this episode. Hello sir and uh, welcome to this platform. Uh, we are truly privileged to have you here and uh, it is a great opportunity for us to discuss it directly with the CEO of HRRL. Uh, so the first question that I want to ask is uh, from the barren land to a state of the art refinery, how would you narrate uh, HPCL's transformative story in your own words? Thank you Sudipto for giving me this platform of sharing uh, HRRL's story about this journey from barren land to this state of affair. I would like to say that uh, HPCL uh, has taken a very bold vision of uh, deciding to set up a, one of the largest, one of the first integrated petrol refinery and petrochemical uh, industry in this region uh, and that too in an area where we started with all odds. The soil is aligned, the water scarcity, scarcity is there, the labor's issues, the climatic conditions. So it's a long journey and uh, I would say that today we are in very better shape and in a verge of uh, commissioning uh, the refinery. And I have seen a lot of uh, uh, what you call ups and downs or you can say a lot of challenges throughout the journey. Right from I have seen people, our own officers sitting in containers uh, facing the extreme climatic conditions, climatic conditions and dealing with the local authorities local populations, local uh, contractors and they have really uh, brought this uh, journey to a fruitful uh, end. So I, I appreciate the teamwork here and uh, we have seen uh, a journey you can say started uh, with somewhere in two, January 2018 with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, our Prime Minister Mr. Modi inaugurating this project and uh, subsequently we started uh, engaging the mega contractors and then there are various uh, stakeholders across India, across the globe which, which became part of this journey and I think uh, we have successfully completed uh, most of the jobs and uh, definitely it is going to add a good future for HPCL as well as this refinery. Sir, uh, thank you very much for uh, describing it, the transformation this place has brought. So you spoke about challenges, if I want to dwell more on it. So what was your biggest leadership challenge while steering such a massive project uh, through the various phases uh, of this project? See Sudhapta, I look this project, uh, this HRL as not a project but as a, as a company in the making. So that itself is making a company or establishing a company in 48 months that itself was a big challenge for me and uh, the other challenges what I what I can say in this journey is to the engagements like the engagements of people the engagement of stock st uh, stakeholders uh, the engagement of contractors the government officials the political circle the local population managing all these sectors together and because the goal of everybody was same the objective was same so I think uh, to manage all these uh, factors or all these agencies, all these people uh, for that for achieving the common goal was the biggest challenge for me. And I think uh, our team, HPCL team or the officers deputed here, they did a tremendous job in ensuring that uh, we sail through this journey. And I think uh, we have come to a end of uh, uh, this journey. And I think uh, I really. Uh, want to thank HPCL management, our own uh, team sitting here 
uh, who have taken a lot of decisions, who have taken a lot of pains in this journey, uh, sacrificed their family life for putting this company at forefront for everybody. And I think uh, we should be able to celebrate as early as possible uh, uh, and seeing this, this, this refinery delivering products to the market. Thank you, sir, for uh, explaining it so beautifully and telling us about the challenges. You spoke about, uh, you know, how it is uh, changing the landscape here. So on a, a much more macro level, if you want to talk about India's energy sector and Rajasthan's e economy. So uh, what are the contributing factors of HRL towards India's uh, uh, energy sector and its economy in the next uh, decade or so? See, this HRL refinery has contributed in many ways. Uh, with respect to the social, if you see, see the social aspect of this refinery, this refinery when it was started, that time it was completely barren land, no industries and uh, this particular uh, company has created enormous uh, employment potential in this region. Presently you can see 30,000 plus workmen are working here, out of which 35% are the local population which are engaging. They are getting skill developed within the region, I think that is going to create a lot of opportunity when the refinery gets commissioned and start running in the next few years. So I think uh, that has given us a lot of socio-economic advantage in the region. And we have seen the development in the last three years, how the, Tremendous, yeah. the, how the sector, how the area has grown up. Because three years back when I arrived here, there was absolutely no shops, no hotels, nothing was there. In the last three years, you must have seen the development yes. that is happening in and around Correct. in a 50 kilometer radius, huge development has happened. And I think HRL is going to play a pivotal role in the downstream industries which are going to crop up subsequently because I am dealing with Rico, who is the industrial uh, investment arm of government of Rajasthan. Right. And I think they are in a very aggressive mode now in establishing the down downstream industry. They've already assigned a lot of spaces, they've already assigned a lot of uh, infrastructure development processes in place. And I think coming years, we will find this region will be the uh, biggest industrial hub, uh, not only in Rajasthan, but it can be a biggest industrial hub in India also. Okay. So that's something to really uh, look forward to, uh, to really cheer about. Uh, sir, we spoke a lot about HRRL. Now uh, we want to speak about your journey, uh, your career. So uh, from a young engineer to now CEO, uh, what personal values have helped you the most in your career? If you see my journey, I, I worked in Mumbai Refinery almost for 30 years and mostly in projects and then balance some of five, six years in maintenance. I see myself uh, working in various leaders and uh, I believe that uh, unless you commit yourself to the objectives of the company, objective of the project, objective of the overall company, I think then you cannot do justice to what you're doing. That so sense I, of purpose has to be there. Exactly, exactly. So I always have that key. You should be uh, with the people. You should be with the team who are in trenches. Okay, so that is my always remains my uh, personal, uh, uh, you can say, attention that I always be remains with the frontline officers to understand their problems, to understand their uh, issues and try to solve them. Because I always believe that the people below you, the people in the front, they are the people who are going to deliver, deliver the objective of the company, objective of the projects. So that is the main reason which has driven me and I always did that and today also I am doing the same thing. So and then the, the other thing is that I feel that uh, you should never uh, give up anything because I always believe that if you give up, I think the only one thing can happen is that the result is uh, uh, will, you will never be achieved anything if you give up. So never giving attitude should be there towards any other job. I think the company is good enough to accommodate you, good enough to support you unless you have the purpose of uh, uh, doing something for the company. The, everything will come in, in place for you. That's my uh, personal experience also and then my personal uh, approach towards the given targets or given objectives or given the assignments. Thank you, sir, uh, for uh, explaining it so beautifully. And I'm sure uh, all the audience and uh, all the young officers who are seeing this, who are aspiring 
to get top positions in their jobs uh, will be motivated with this and uh, they will get also enriched with that so as we just uh, finish off so last uh, if you want to give just one advice to the young officers apart from what you said about your own career uh, starting their careers what would it be i should say that uh, the officers uh, should believe in themselves okay they should believe in themselves that they can do something for the company they can do something for themselves they can grow in this company they can learn from this company and they have to be curious okay i think i always tell my people that uh, positional leadership should not be considered you should be uh, you should always be uh, looking at the overall objectives and try to do justice to that the position will follow the recognition will follow so that is always my uh, say to the young officers and uh, the other thing is that i always say that you should be a leader who matters so that should be your your priorities uh, in any company you should become a leader who matters leader. for the people for the company thank you thank you sir uh, so uh, you should be the leader who matters uh, with that i would like to uh, thank you for uh, joining us on this interview and uh, we are truly privileged to uh, listen to you and i'm sure uh, our audience will uh, uh, get a lot of enrichment for it thank you sir thank you thank you very much